Yeah, hello, my name is Craigie Calamari, and recently, Mr. Green posted a video called Things I Would Change in Minecraft. And I thought to myself, I've been playing this game for a little over 11 years now, ever since release back in 2011. Yeah, I think I have some ideas on how I would change Minecraft as well. <laughs> Now, a little bit of a disclaimer before I actually get into this episode. Green said it himself, and he said it best. He said, this is not an attack towards Mojang in any way, shape, or form. But maybe, just maybe, they'll hear the little creators in us thinking, hey, maybe we can do a little bit something different with Minecraft and make it a little bit more enjoyable. Not that it's not enjoyable already. Stop taking my words out of context. But hey, maybe we could do something else to kind of up the game just slightly you know we're always updating maybe we could just add something a little bit extra in the next one yeah <laughs> wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> oh sorry did i interrupt you <laughs> so welcome to things i would change in minecraft <laughs> So first and foremost, the biggest thing that I personally would change and something that a lot of YouTubers rant and rave about, it's parity differences between Java and Bedrock. I know there's a lot of different versions of Minecraft and I know there's reasons for having different versions of Minecraft. One of the biggest things that I could think of just off of the top of my head, placing blocks is a little bit different between the two versions. Like for me, a little old Java player, you know what would be really cool right here? It would be really cool to have a bridge so I don't have to get my clothes all soaked every single time I have to go across this waterway. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll just go ahead and do a little bit of bridge like this, do a little bit of sneaky maneuvers so that I can do kind of like this angled bit. And then I just peek off to the side of this block here, kind of go to this point where it almost looks like I'm floating. And then right here on the edge of the block, I'll go ahead and click and I make a fancy little bridge. Yeah. That's kind of what you expect a pro builder to build a bridge like, yeah? <laughs> Moral of the story, this is easy to do because, hey, look, I have multiple fingers and I have my pinky on my shift button. So it's super easy to kind of control my character, go in every single direction and use the mouse to kind of pinpoint an exact place to put my blocks here. So I understand that this is okay for Java. Now on bedrock, there's a little bit of a difference, okay? If I wanted to build this same bridge here, instead what I would do is I would come to this block, look over the edge, and theoretically if I were to right click, a block would or like automatically place like this. So it would look like this. Click, oh look at that, a block just appeared. Click, man, building in bedrock is easy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's actually a reason why that exists, right? Bedrock was originally built for the console. So a lot of people are building with the Xbox controller. And so it's very difficult to hit the crouch button, go off the edge, and click this. Is it impossible? Definitely not. But is it easier for Xbox controller players to go here, click, and a block to automatically appear? Heck yes. So that parity difference makes a little bit of sense. What doesn't make sense is that these guys act a whole different way on Bedrock than they do on Java. In fact, a lot of the farms involving these guys, like the carrot farms and the trading and all of that, it's 100% different in Bedrock than it is in, in Java. So farms like these that I have on the Obsidian Order SMP, well, they're not necessarily gonna work in the same way. So you pretty much scrap this idea because it's pretty much not gonna happen on Bedrock. <laughs> and that's just one of the many differences. Obviously there's health regeneration, there's a lot in the code. Some mobs have certain health where uh, in one version as in the other version, it's a whole another story. There's variants of different things like fish, like in Bedrock, for example, fish can come in various sizes, small, medium, large. Same thing with these guys, same thing with dolphins there's just a lot a lot that's different between the two games and it makes it difficult for me how it ultimately affects me i'm a java player i will be and always will be and always have been and always have will been <laughs> a java minecraft player primarily because it's easy for me to do it this is how i learned the game this is ultimately how i'm going to play the game for the rest of my life but as a dad of two daughters, one of which is learning how to play Minecraft currently, 
on the Xbox because it's convenient for her little hands, it makes it a little bit difficult. Oh no, baby girl, it's getting dark outside. Run to your house and find a place to sleep so you can sleep the night away and not have to worry about all the zombies and baddies of the night that will obviously kill you because you're only four years old and don't know the game. Run to your house, dear girl. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Easy, and no one can get in. This is my bed. I'll just go ahead and sleep. Oh no, it's nighttime and all the zombies and skeletons of the world are gonna come eat me and I'm playing in bedrock mode right now and I have to try to run to my house to go sleep. Oh no, even when I crouch, I cannot get into this one and a half block zone here. What am I going to do? I guess I'll just go ahead and die by the creepers of the night. <laughs> oh no. Oh, uh, <coughs> And I think I made my point very clear here. <laughs> Long story short, it's the same exact game. Minecraft, Bedrock, Minecraft, Java. There really shouldn't be a difference. I hate going to videos and having to decipher whether or not it's a Bedrock tutorial or a Java tutorial. And that makes the world of difference when you're dealing with farms and various things dealing with Minecraft in general. So why not just kind of work on the parody thing, make it all one video game. I understand some differences like the bridge thing that we were talking about, but some differences are just pointless. Let's, let's, let's work on that. Let's fix that. Now this next thing that I personally would change might sound a lot like what Grian said when he said, we need to make spawning rooms, the dungeons in caves a little bit better. <laughs> Do I agree with them? Yes, 100%. I think these little guys, they definitely need a refresher course in what a dungeon actually is. I mean, look at what we got over here. Awesome end cities, really cool looking mansions. Temples are fun. Yes, do they need an update? Yeah, for sure, they're getting a little stale. But hey, I love it. I love how it works. And who am I if I don't mention the deep, dark cities that are coming with the wardens here in 1.19? <laughs> these guys are beautiful. But as far as these dungeons go, yeah, a little bit stale, plain Jane, something needs to be done. But that is not what I'm complaining about today. What I am complaining about today is this guy right here. The wee old zombie spawner. I hate you. I hate you with the passion. When I come cave in and I see one of you and before I get here, I'm like, oh, thank goody, thank goody. Please be a skelly spawner. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's pointless. What do these guys do? The only thing that they do is they satisfy XP. I kill one of you guys, maybe I get a little bit of an inkling of XP. Yeah, I'll take it, yeah, sure. But what's the point of a zombie XP farm when you have farms like the Ender Ender? Yeah, are you kidding me? I'm never gonna use one of these guys. Not to mention the drops that they give me are absolute trash. <laughs> Why would I ever need zombie flesh? <laughs> no. So for me, two things need to be changed, okay? One, there should be something more surprising in the zombie spawner's chest, right? When I just go into here and I see, oh, okay, well, we just got some plain Jane stuff. Actually, this is this isn't too bad of loot. I'll take a golden apple and some music discs, all right. But let's be honest, when I usually go to a chest, this is what it looks like. That's just my luck, right? <laughs> But when I go into a zombie dungeon and I look into a chest and it looks a little bit something like this, <laughs> well, I'm a little bit more intrigued and pretty happy that I actually found a zombie spawner, okay? Yeah, will I break this? Of course. <laughs> but hey, there's a whole lot of loot in here that's absolutely mwah, amazing as well. The second thing I think needs to be addressed is something to do with the rotten flesh. Do we need some use for the rotten flesh? Heck yes. I know there's some mods where you can hang up rotten flesh on the wall and make like uh, a jerky type of uh, a food that you can eat. I don't think we need to go extreme and do anything like this, but make zombie rotten flesh something that I can use. Maybe like bait for a fishing rod so that I can catch better fish or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But I definitely think I need to be a little bit more excited when I come in to see a zombie spawner. So let's fix that, yeah. Now another thing that I think needs to be fixed or at least addressed in additional patches or updates in the future of Minecraft, exploration. 
definitely necessary. These guys are fun. I absolutely love the aspect where you have to get the map from the villager and then you use that map. You find these mansions. You have to go thousands and thousands of blocks away to eventually find this guy. And hey, that's like a quest. And I'm a quest boy, baby. I love a little bit of questage in Minecraft. Now, there are some mods that do the whole RPG vibe where some villagers give out quests. I'm not going that far. I don't think we need to go that far and really delve into the modded territory of Minecraft. No, 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 no. What I'm thinking is give us a little bit more reason to go out here into the wilderness, right? I would love to see an exploration update or maybe like a hunting update even. Like say for example, right? Oh, I like this idea. It just popped in my head. Oh my goodness, a jungle temple. I love these things. They're so fun to play around with and explore and go in here and uh, just, oh, 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 look at that. I just dodged the arrow. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> oh, look at all these really cool things. Zombie flesh that we can go ahead and put on our fishing pole and catch better fish. But what is this? A hunting book. What? <laughs> Let's read this thing. A massive boar has been sighted in the plains biome to the south. A reward has been put out for the adventurer who takes it down. <gasps> that is so cool. Okay, well, let's go down multiple blocks. Haha, <laughs> you missed me again, punk. And let's go hunt down this boar. Oh, what is that? What's going on here? Okay. Wow, this is interesting. Um, you know what it looks like to me, and not just because I built it. It looks like a pig has lived here. Maybe a giant boar of some sort? I don't know. This is, this is crazy. It's like, what, wait, what's all this? Feces! Oh, no! Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't have to be feces. Maybe it could be, like, tracks or something, like, in the grass. <laughs> but we should probably follow this. Yeah, it looks like there's, like, a clear-cut line. We're gonna go on a hunt today, boys. Let's hunt down the giant boar. Well, I mean, that doesn't make too much sense, but hey, look, <laughs> giant boars everywhere. Of course, we're gonna have to get a new player model or a new pig model out here to indicate which one the giant boar is. But look, I'm gonna kill this guy. Wah -bah! He's gonna put up a fight. He's gonna hurt me. I'm gonna hurt him. It's gonna be difficult. Not as difficult as the wither, but hey, it's gonna be a big fight, right? Wow, look what that pig dropped! A netherite chest plate! Of course it doesn't have to be a netherite chest plate. Imagine that it's a really cool, unique item that only that pig has dropped, right? That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> So that accomplished a couple things. One, it got me on this really cool adventure that I absolutely love. I love a little bit of role play in my life, so I think that would have been really cool, and a lot of people would enjoy that as well. But what it also did is it allowed me to journey around the land, okay? Maybe, of course, it won't be like the jungle biome is right here, this is where the pig sty is, and then I killed the pig here. Maybe I have to travel thousands and thousands of blocks and really delve into tracking this animal down because it's always on the move or something crazy like that. Maybe you just have like a roaming pig or a roaming mob that just roams the land forever. I don't know. I'm not a coder. Is that possible? Who knows? But I think there needs to be something that pushes us into an exploration phase of Minecraft. Another thing that I think needs to be addressed is XP. We need more things to do with XP. Now, as you already know, you go to an enchantment setup at 30 levels because you can get the max XP up here. So look, with a netherite chest plate that we just got off of that intense boar that we just fought and three pieces of loppies and I can get protection four. Is that five? I, I can, I don't know. I think V is five. So is that protection four? <laughs> Who knows? I can get a good enchant on my netherite chest plate. Look at that. We're looking all fancy and stuff. But what happens when you're fully decked out? You have all the netherite armor, you have all of your equipment, they're all enchanted, you're good to go, and you just build XP like crazy. <laughs> You see this all the time on the Hermitcraft server. Yes, the Hermitcraft server, they're basically pros. They do this for a living, but a lot of them have like 400 levels. They're just sitting at their gold farm, just accumulating levels like crazy. I've seen, I think, Cubfan go up to 9,999 levels. Are you, are you insane? <laughs> what the heck? 
The only thing that I could think of is let us craft XP bottles, right? How cool would it be if you're playing on an SMP, right? Kind of like this one. Now, this is my single player world. It's definitely not an SMP, but imagine I need some more experience points so that I can do X, Y, and Z, whatever you guys say down in the comments below. <laughs> but I need some more XP, and I really don't feel like going and building a spawner or using somebody else's spawner. You know what the best way I could do that is? Go to a shop that sells XP bottles where I can just go ahead and pick up five. I'll pay with slime balls. <laughs> and now I can just go and use the bottle of enchanting on me. <laughs> Look at that. Five enchanting bottles for a couple slime balls. Sounds like a good trade to me. That way there's a little bit more use for XP in the world is now we can start opening up shops in our survival multiplayers or we can just go ahead and store them for later. Like let's say I'm going on this very crazy adventure to the nether. I'm probably going to die, but I want to store all 50 of my XP for later just in case. And you can have a loss rate. I don't care between extinguishing it from your body into the bottle. I don't know. I just think it'd be really cool to be able to store it and maybe sell it or whatever the case is in the future. Now, another thing we could do that would be pretty simple, I think, in my personal opinion, is just add like a magician villager or something. So if you find the magician villager, you can go up to him and you can trade not with emeralds, but with XP. So it'll show you there, you need to have 30 levels to get this really cool item. I don't know how that would ultimately work. And honestly, I think villager farms are pretty much OP, like Green was saying in his video. So would that make the problem a little bit worse? Probably. But like I said, I'm not a developer or anything, and I don't know what goes into making that. So I think that's a plausible solution to the XP problem. <laughs> what do you guys think? Okay. This one, you're going to hate me. I, I already see it. I already know what's going to happen. I'm going to apologize in advance, but I'm not backing down from this one. <laughs> okay, so we obviously know that we can negate fall damage pretty easily by jumping into water, right? Not a big deal. Took zero fall damage. That's a pretty high height. I probably would have died if I hit the land here. That makes a reasonable amount of sense. If I were to jump out of a plane in real life and I hit the water, I'm probably dead. But this is game mechanics. I understand it. I'll suspend my belief just a slightly bit further because we're playing with blocks in a game called Minecraft. Okay, I'll give you that. This, on the other hand, doesn't make too much sense. <laughs> I don't understand how I could be one million blocks up and fall down into two source blocks of water and be perfectly fine. In the same regard, this doesn't make too much sense either, okay? I'm not one of those circus guys where I can jump off a tall little platform and land in a tiny kiddie pool and survive. Even if I belly flop into something like that, that's not gonna happen. I can only suspend my belief so much. <laughs> Now, this next one may be a little bit nitpicky and almost impossible to fix, but as a builder, I run into this issue more often than I like to admit. Also, P.S., this build is spoilers for what's going to happen in the next episode of the Obsidian Order SMP, so please do not spoil this for anybody that doesn't watch this video. <laughs> Thank you. So I absolutely fell in love with this design. I think it's a little bit of quirkiness, a little bit of craziness, and it was just super fun to build. But an issue I fell into was placing these trap doors. Not these ones, this one's perfectly fine. These ones right here were a little bit difficult because hey, it was a little bit closer to this wall piece here. See, for example, I take out that trap door. It looks like I should be able to put a trap door right here where this guy is, but, uh, but no, I can't do that because, hey, look, this guy is taking up its space. <laughs> so rather than continuing on the cuboid look here of having this nice, pretty outskirt to make it feel like the amethyst is being contained in it, and it can't just simply fall out of this platform here, I have to put something here. And the only thing I can do is this. Now, is my average SMP member actually going to be able to see that from this distance? Oh, absolutely not, unless you're looking straight for it, right? And then 
I understand that making this video is doing no justice and helping me out in that regard. But hey, I'm going to see this every single time I walk up to my shop. And honestly, it's going to drive me nuts. It really is. Now, while I'm here, there's one more thing that kind of irks me a little bit. And I understand it can't be fully in the game for reasons like this, for example. But I wish there were connected textures that didn't have anything to do with resource packs okay and i don't know if it's a personal preference is this something that you enjoy seeing the the clear-cut difference between stone and dirt there because i don't necessarily like that i think it should definitely fade into the stone or the stone fade into the dirt i think that should be something that happens i understand how it doesn't happen here where it goes deep slate oops i forgot i was in creative <laughs> where it goes deep slate into a green powder into moss i understand because that's a weird ten connected texture palette that i'm sure no one thinks of of or is even necessary but it, i wish there was just some in between from here to here maybe if we could find a, a color palette that gives us some in between color that changes from moss to green to deep slate or whatever like i said i'm getting really picky right now and i really don't like going to external sources such as resource packs to be able to take care of this situation i wish you know we have all of these settings I wish we could change it in here to have certain connective textures. Picky, 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 picky. Anyway, I'm sure there are plenty of other things that I absolutely hate about this game and definitely need to be changed. But in general, I love this game. I will always love playing this game. In fact, I've been playing it for 11 years now. Why should I change it anytime soon? I'm still having as much fun as I did on day one. So I'm incredibly excited about the future of this game and where it's going. Looking forward to other updates that are coming out in the near future. 1.19 is going to be super fun with the warden i just think maybe we should take a step back and look into some changes that are probably necessary i think that parody one is probably on the top of my list even though i don't play bedrock i think that everybody should have uh, the similar game especially when minecraft is legitimately the title of the game but thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you're new to the channel subscribe like the video comment down below what you guys think should be added to the game or what should be uh, changed in the game something that you don't necessarily like and please 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 not that he needs any introduction or any promotion but this whole video was inspired by green he made a video doing the same exact thing saying what he would like to change in minecraft please go over to his channel subscribe if you haven't i don't know what you're doing on my channel if you haven't subscribed to his channel yet but please go and and view that video he deserves every bit of viewership that you could possibly give him because he is a, a, an amazing content creator but anyway without further ado guys thank you guys so much for watching i'm ending the video now i love you guys to death and i'll talk to you guys next time peace